Hello folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to add a menu system similar to this one into your game. So with this dummy little game it says press space to pause and when I do that it pauses the game and brings up my main menu. So the resume button works by setting me back into the game, the quit button will close the game down and the options button takes me onto another menu with further settings and a back button to go back into the main menu. So let's see how this is put together. So this is a starter file that I've put together just to save a bit of time, but at the moment it doesn't really have any functionality. It creates the game window and it puts us into a game loop with the option to close it down. So I'll quickly just run through it line by line, but there's nothing too complicated here. So first of all, we import Pygame and initialize it. Then these next few lines, they take care of creating the game window. So we set the width and the height variables and then create the window itself here. Uh, this little function is not used yet, but I've just put it in because I will need it when I come to put text onto the screen. And then we go into the game loop itself. I set the background color with this line here. This is the event handler just to make sure that I can actually quit the game and it doesn't hang up. And then lastly, we up update the display and quit Pi game once the while loop is exited. So this is almost like the boilerplate that you should all be familiar with by now. And it just saves you watching me type it all out again. Now before I set up the menu itself, I'm going to add some text onto the screen to give the player instructions on how to pause the game. So to do that, I will use this draw text function, but first I need to define a couple of variables. So let's add a comment here to say define fonts, and this will be font is equal to font with a capital F, and the font that I'm going to use is going to be Arial Black. And then the second parameter is going to be the font size. Then in addition to that, I need to define colors. I only have one color here, which is going to be the text color. So I'll say the text color is equal to 255, 255, 255. So it's going to be a white text. And now I can go into the game loop and just above this event handler, I can now call this draw text function to put that instruction onto the screen. So I'll say draw underscore text, press space to pause. And then the other parameters it takes are the font the color, and then the X and Y coordinates that I want to display this on the screen. So if I run this again, I now get this instruction here. But of course, when I press space, nothing happens yet. So to do that, I need to add some more functionality to this event handler. At the moment, the only event I'm looking for is this pygame.quit, which is just when I click the little X in the top right corner. The event that I want to now add into it is to look for keyboard presses. So within this for loop, I'm going to add another event check. So I'll say if event type is equal to pygame.key down, meaning that a key has been pressed. Well, if that has happened, then I need to look for the specific keys that I'm interested in. So in my case, I can say if event.key is equal to pygame.k underscore space, all caps. If that's happened, then I've pressed the space bar, so I should be able to pause the game. So let's just print out pause. Now I run this again, and if I press the space bar now, it prints out down here, pause. But what I actually want to do, rather than just printing something out here, I want to be able to pause the game. So for that, I need to add in game states. Now there are different ways of doing this and it really depends on the complexity of your game. But for me, I find just using variables works quite well for this. So I'll go back up to the start of the game, just underneath where I create my game window and before I define my fonts. And I'll add a section that says game variables. And for now, I just have one, which is going to be game underscore paused, which I will set to false to begin with. So I'll be using this Boolean value, and I'll be changing it between true and false, depending on whether the game is paused or not. Now I can go back down to here, where I'm looking for that space key being pressed, and rather than printing pause, I can change that variable from false to true. So I can say game paused is now equals to true. So if I run this again, nothing actually changes. I can press space, but nothing's going on. Now I know that in the background, this variable is getting changed, but it's not affecting the displays. And this is where these game states actually come in. So I don't want to always be drawing this text on the screen. Instead, I want to be doing a check first of all to see if the game is paused or not. So we'll say check if game is paused and then add this variable check. So I'll say if game underscore paused is equal to true, well, then I'm going to be doing a number of things here, which is going to be displaying the actual menu. So for now, I'll just put pass with a comment to say display menu. But if it's not paused, i.e. else, 
well then I can run the game and in my case all the game does is this bit here. So if I run this again, it says press space to pause, as soon as I press space, the text disappears, which is correct. It's just not displaying anything in its place yet. So now we can begin creating the menu, and in this case the menu is just going to be a collection of buttons. Now I've got this additional file here next to my main.py, which is called button.py. So this is the button class that I created that I'm going to be using for this demo. I'm not going to go through how all this works. I have a separate video that goes into detail on exactly how to set up these buttons from scratch. So if you want to learn about that, then I'll put a link for that up here. But for now, we're just going to assume that you know how this works, and we're just going to load that module in and start creating buttons with it. So first of all, I need to import that module. So I'll say import button, which will allow me to take the code from here and use it within my main.py file. Now to create my individual buttons, I need to load in their images. You might have noticed here that I've got a folder called images, which has a bunch of buttons, or rather a bunch of images in it, which are representing each of my buttons. So what I need to do here is just load all those images in one by one. So just underneath here where I've got my text underscore color, I'm going to add a section to say load button images and we'll say the resume underscore image is equal to pygame.image.load and the location of that file relative to this main.py file, well it's in this images folder, so we'll say images forward slash button underscore resume dot png and then lastly we need to convert and add convert alpha at the end. So with the image loaded I can now create my button instances. So I essentially use the button class that I've got here within this button file to create instances of these buttons. I'll say resume underscore button is equal to button.button. .button. So it's the module and then the class name. Then the arguments it takes are the x coordinate, the y coordinate, the image, which I've just loaded, and then lastly, the scale. Now I don't need to play around with the scale in this case, so I'm just going to set it to one. And just to show how this looks, we'll go into the game loop and here, instead of saying pass, we're going to replace all of this with resume underscore button dot draw screen. So if I run this again, uh, what have I done? Ah, resume IMG, not image. So if I run this again, I should press space and I get my button up here. Now it's not functional, I can't actually click it yet, but the button is being drawn. So now we can start adding in the functionality for it. So what I can do here is check if this button has been clicked by simply adding an if statement to the start of it. So I can say if resume button dot draw screen, which basically means that has that return true, i.e. it's been clicked. Well then when I press resume, I just want to come back out into my main game, meaning that the game is no longer paused. So I trigger that game or rather I, I change that game paused variable back to false because the game is no longer paused. So I go press space to pause, I get the resume button, I click that and I go back into my main game. So far so good. So now let's add in the rest of the buttons for that main menu. So I just copy this down a couple more times and I just change the names of them. So the second one is options. So we're just going to change the file name here as well. So it's button options. Last one was quit. So we change that and we change the name of the file. And once I've loaded the images, I need to make sure that I create the instances of the buttons as well. So this one's going to be the options button. Last one's going to be the quit button. And the only differences here are obviously going to be the images. So I need to change the images themselves. And I also need to change the coordinates so they can't all be blitted over each other. So I just mess around with the X and Y coordinates here. Move these down a little bit so I can stack them on top of each other. And that should be all of my buttons loaded in. So now we go back into the game loop and this section here where I'm checking if the game is paused, well I actually need to display the rest of the buttons as well. So it's not just one resume button, there's a few more there. So underneath this if statement I just add a couple more. So I'll, in fact I'll just copy this down. So the next one was going to be options. So we'll change that to options. If that one's been pressed, well, that's going to take me to the options menu, which for now doesn't exist. So let's just put a pass in there for now. And then the last button is going to be quit. So if the quit button has been clicked, well, then we just end the game. We exit. And remember, to exit the game, you just exit this while loop, which at the moment is being controlled by this run variable. So as long as the run variable is true, the game runs. As soon as it's set to false, the, end, the while loop ends and that's the game over. So all I need to do here is just say run is equal to false. 
So I'll try this again. So I've got press space, resume brings it back in, options does nothing, and quit closes it down. So I've got my main game menu up here. I've got this one working. But remember from the demo, when I clicked options, it brought up a second menu. So I was actually able to control which menu I'm displaying. Well, before we get into that, let's load in all the additional images that I'm going to need for that second menu. Now to save you watching me type all this out, I'm just going to paste them across from my snippets. So that's the rest of the buttons. I've got video settings, audio settings, key bindings, and then a back button to go back into the main pause menu. And then on top of that, we need to make sure that we create the instances. So again, I'll just paste this in to save you watching me type it all out. I'll just run it to make sure it's being loaded in correctly. Okay, so I know it's loading fine, there's no errors, but of course it still doesn't work because I don't have the functionality coded in for the options button. So this is a tricky bit. Now, how do I determine which buttons I'm going to be displaying at what time? So at the moment when I press space, I get this main menu. When I click options, I should be able to remove this menu and show the options menu instead. But how do I determine which one is supposed to be displayed to avoid having them both on at the same time? Well, for this, again, I'm going to use states. So I'll go back up to my game variable section and I'm going to add an additional state, which is going to control the menus. So I will say menu underscore state is equal to, well, it's going to start off as the main menu. So whenever you press pause, it brings up the main menu. So that's what I'm going to call my initial menu state. So now we can go into the game loop again and just add a little bit more of a check into it. So first of all, we check if the game is paused. So if it is, we then need to check the menu state. So I add a comment to say check menu state. And underneath that, I can say if menu underscore state is equal to main. So if we're in the main menu, well, then I want to draw these buttons that I already had before. So I want to draw the resume button, the options button and the quit button. So all of these are only going to be shown if the menu is in the main menu state. So in fact, I'll just add a little, little comment here to say draw pause screen buttons. So these are the buttons that are displayed when we're in the initial pause screen. Well, that means that all I need to do within the section here where I'm checking for the options button being clicked rather than passing, I just need to change this menu state. So I need to change it from the main menu to the options menu. So we'll say menu underscore state becomes options. So let's just run this and see what happens. So I press space and resume still goes back to normal as it was. Now, if I press options, the menu disappears. So it's doing exactly what it should, right? The text is no longer there because the game is still paused, but my main menu is also not there because we're not in the main menu anymore. We've gone into the options menu. So the thing that's left to do now is actually draw all the buttons that are associated with that options menu. Now I've currently got this one check up here that says if menu state is equal to main. So I just need to make sure that I come down here, go into the same level of indentation. So line up those lines there and then say, oh, add a comment to say, check if the options menu is open. So we can say if menu state is now equal to options, well then we display all of the other buttons instead. So check the different, no, not check, draw, draw the different options buttons. Now, if we go back up, just as a reminder, those buttons were video, audio, the key bindings and a back button. So I just need to put all these already created, the X and Y coordinates and the images are already there. They're just not being drawn. So I just need to draw them on here. So again, I'm just going to paste them across rather than typing them all out. It's just similar to the code that's above here. I go through each of the buttons. I call this draw method and then I check if it's being clicked, i.e. if it's returning a true variable. So if the video button's clicked, I'm just going to display text uh, down here. So let's just try this. Let's run it and see what happens. So we pause, then we go into options and I've got these three buttons here. So video settings, you see down here it says video settings, audio and key bindings. So each one of them is now giving me the correct output. The only button that's missing is the back button. I don't have a way of getting back into my main menu and basically returning back to the unpaused game. So I deliberately left that one out. Let's just add that one in now. So I'll say here if back underscore button dot draw uh, we say draw on a screen. If that button has been clicked, well, all I need to do now is switch back into my previous menu state. So I need to go from the options menu back into the main menu. So I just change that menu state again and I change it back into main. So if I run this again, I pause the game, resume, that's okay, that's working. 
options, give me these options as before, and then back, takes me back into this main menu, resume, lets me play the game again. And that's pretty much it. So that's how you would add a menu into your game. Now, for a more complicated game, of course, you could already see how maybe this would become a little messy and potentially you'd start running into some issues with different buttons. But I think for generally for smaller games, this method has worked pretty well for me. So I hope you found that useful. And if you like this video, then please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.